Techies and Tech Fs, brand new AMD driver. It definitely does seem like a footnote for a new installment for certain games, but we'll be looking at some benchmarks, we'll be looking at the patch notes. My name is Matt here at the MacGyver 7 channel, and today will be some AMD related game driver news. And if you haven't already checked out the brand new 21.Q1, I'll have that linked at the very end of the video. For most creators, it is, well, a nice thing to kind of look at for as far as your creation station and doing a little bit of gaming time spy in this extreme 4k comes into a nice little portion now the brand new driver is going to be on the right 21.3.2 and then accompanied by that is 21.3.1 on the left now both of these are installed on the brand new windows platform that they seem to be just ironing out over and over again so there will be some probably security driver updates and other things that will kind of mess with the performance so make sure windows is updated as you kind of get down to this some fps could be lost and if you're experiencing some gameplay issues leave a comment down on what system you have and what gpu you in company with that so that way people can be not alone sometimes it's nice to just feel like you're in the gaming collective now moving on past the intro of what we looked at with benchmarks and getting to patch notes we can see that it starts with some outriders to evil genius 2 and world domination to dirt 5 and the update 4.0 as it comes down to the direct x ray tracing but there are some fixed issues that we should be taking a look at AMD starts to patch up a lot of the 6000 series, starting with the 6700 and the RX, as we can kind of see what ends up happening for recorded clock values that were performing the tuning and the system graphic hardwares in the information tab. It continues with some weird exhibits of corruption and an insurgency standstorm for the 6000 series and graphic products. Now the limited number of displays preferred in the desktop resolution in Windows may change in the display in the power cycle, which is kind of a bum here, because honestly, like I've noticed that when you do switch it to the AMD preferred platform over the high performance, there is a difference actually, uh, but it may crash your system in doing so it's really weird but a reset works right as rain looking at past that for april showers as we slam out of the end of march and as hopefully they'll be giving us a 21.4.1 soon in the wind the start of the cancel button is going to be fixed for the performance and tuning the stress test for as far as what displays in the radeon software and the resize to be small and it's a nice little function to actually have that stress test in order to kind of see what ends up happening when you're playing around with overclocks or as far as the black screen that may occur in limited number of displays when the radeon FreeSync is enabled and playing the game and set to borderless full screen the radeon rx 6000 graphic products may well now hopefully work so as we go down to the actual known issues you can see that there are some variants for as far as the vega series and the larger difference in resolutions and refreshes so it's basically variable refresh rates not really a good thing rocket league also hits the list for as far as the borderless and full screen and shutters or ghosting as they call it and then rx 400 and 500 graphic series experiences tdr so a little bit higher than normal during playback so unfortunately you're gonna have some bottlenecking seems like in the near future but you can always under vault it that's one of the cool things about amd is if you are hitting that just give it a little less juice and somehow it works it's just the miracle of amd sometimes but moving on past that situation of a tip that you can always do with inside the adrenaline software you can look at the situation of what the brightness and flickers may occur for as far as the occurrence in the game application for the radeon FreeSync and their whole point of the borderless screen now this is getting a little bit to the point where it's just like i know i see that they're having a huge issue with the borderless screen and hopefully they can get that completely enabled for as far as the workarounds that you can see that will occur even when you get a black screen as to follow up with their what they're saying is that you're going to have to disable and work around now that's a pretty like i suppose open issue that amd's kind of had for a good second in the series and hopefully they can get dialed in but let's go ahead and jump into our benchmarks let's go ahead and close up what we have open during directx 12 as we peer into what's going to end up being our bench results being exactly the same percentiles not a lot of stuff is going to end up jumping up and in fact you can actually see that this driver has Hopefully more fixes for the Radeon series and stability and not closing screens from full screen. And that's where the loss is basically in its stability. Now, again, for as far as what we will close out and go to DirectX 11 with may tell a different tale. 
with taking the extreme to 4k to see the department of it not really budging past one point it's super nominal so this driver will slide over quite well it seems like with the direct x12 you may get more stability and with direct x11 it's seeming pretty good at the tough in the top now where you may see this score go a little bit higher by a point, it's the physics score that's being a little bit more friendly with the newer driver as it sizes up and the graphics taking a little bit underneath. So I mean it seems like with more extreme settings on 1080p, 2k, go right around that portion of where we're getting into like nowadays market, you are going to see a little bit of a drawback but hopefully again there are stability. If not, you know, leave a comment of what game you're using with GPU and CPU. It'd always be nice to hear from the community and new people just to see what's going on out in the world. So let's go ahead and sum up with the most common one, just the fire strike, the bread and the butter. And you do see a decent increasement point wise. Not necessarily would you say during the physics, yes, it does take a little bit of a hit as you almost see it drop about 400, but you do get a nice little uprise for as far as the graphics. So again, maybe they've tuned this and basically now the tandemness of it's moving around stuff isn't going on certain draw of certain GPUs, though some will be afflicted with higher TDR. And that just happens to be an issue that's open as they make that fine wine a little bit more robust. But as this portion goes down, I can say honestly, this driver doesn't seem too bad if you have the games that were listed in the patch notes then yeah it's probably worth installing but if you're already having some really great situation in gameplay with already the 21.3.1 then there really isn't that big of an issue now if you've updated a game and you're like holy crap i can't play this then update this driver to see if it afflicts what's going down but if it doesn't and it goes ridic then back up do a ddu and refresh and go back to the 21.3.1 hopefully at that point in time their game developing team will come out with another patch and i'll talk about it but if you're new to the network you can always like share and subscribe absolutely free helps me out as a creator and if you do today go ahead and hit that notification bell slam it straight down the center like a liberty bell and let it ring so the next actual gaming and or software update that we will see for at least amd in this situation of this video will be coming to you as fast as it possibly can so i will take it ease and say stay safe stay classy everyone and i will see you guys and gals in the near future for more game related news